what have you made of 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 Havertz generally? Because he's one of the big changes we made from last season. Mm. Xhaka out, Havertz in. And I don't even know if the intention was for Havertz to play in that position as often as he has. But everybody is kind of looking at him and going, well, that's one of the problems. That's one of the issues. Where where are you on the German? I think it's definitely one of the issues. There's no doubt about it. And, I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and slam Kai Havertz and, and criticise him. A lot of enough people have done that this season. And I think there's been, you know, good signs from Havertz in the last six weeks or so. And, you know, he won, he got the player of the month award for what was November, didn't he? And I thought he, he fully warranted that. His performances were good. He was scoring some important goals. But I think there's no doubt that Arsenal have struggled in that left eight role with what Havertz brings compared to what um, Granit Xhaka was bringing. And just a lack of... When you compare the sort of touches and how involved Granit Xhaka was in every single game he played last season, and then you compare how involved Kai Havertz is in every single game, it's just very, very different. And they offer, they offer different things, obviously. But you know, I, I, having just said I want to mute the words last season... Um, <laughs> You know, I, I'm convinced, absolutely convinced, if Granit Xhaka was still here this season and playing this Arsenal team, that they'd be top of the Premier League right now. I'm absolutely convinced. I do. And I just think the, the 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 absence of him has been such a huge, has, has played such a huge part on this side and why we're potentially not seeing him play as well as we were probably expecting this season. I think his absence has had a big part in maybe some of the downturn in form of some other players around him, Gabriel Martinelli, Alexander Zinchenko, players like that, just not having Granite there has played a big, big part of that. And that's, I'm not blaming Kai Havertz for that in, in any way. I just think that the difference between the two and how effective they are and how involved they are in games has just been, it, it's just really apparent, I think, watching Arsenal this season that that, that left eight role is a little bit of an issue. And so then do, do we have to, sorry to cut across you, do we then have to look at Mikel Arteta for taking that decision? to completely rip up what had worked in the left eight role. And rather than signing someone who would be a like for like and complement the system that we'd already established, do we have to look at him for maybe overcomplicating it by trying to kind of reinvent the wheel? I think you've got you got to really, because it was his decision um, to do it. You know, he could have, there was there were other players on that, that he could assign players who know that role more, who are more adjusted to that role, who are more suited to that role. He took a bit of a gamble on Kai Havertz. <laughs> you know, this is a player who we'd all seen underwhelm for a long time for Chelsea. Um, you know, it wasn't at the start of last, at the end of last season, if you said to me, <coughs> excuse me, Arsenal are going to sign Kai Havertz, I'd have said, you're mad. There's no no chance that's going to happen. But they did. They took a gamble. At the moment, I wouldn't say it's paid off. You know, they paid a lot of money and I don't think it's working. I'm not saying it's not going to work and hopefully it will. And I don't think he's done anywhere near as badly a lot of, as a lot of people say he has. I think some of his performances have been good. And I would have liked to see him play in that central striker role more often than he has. But I think injuries and unavailability has led to him not being able to do that. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately you have to look at the decision to sign him as Granite's replacement and invest that amount of money as Granite's replacement as a questionable one and one that at the moment, as it stands, doesn't look like it is it has worked and it has improved Arsenal. Um, obviously, we have to wait and see over the next season, 18 months, to see if that changes and he does really grow into that role and becomes hugely influential, which I really hope he does. Where are you at on Emil Smith-Rowe? Because that's another player who, you know, people are looking at and going, well, you know, why isn't he getting opportunities? Why isn't he getting chances in this side? I'm very much of the opinion that he's got to prove that he can stay fit over a period of time. And even now, you know, I, the Liverpool game, people were calling for him to start. And I was looking at it and I'm thinking, does he have any more than 15, 20 minutes in the tank at this stage? I don't think he does. So how do we go about getting him back to the level that he needs to be? And, and does he have a future at Arsenal in your view? No, I don't think he does because Mikel's not playing him. <laughs> and so I think ultimately, if that continues, and there's no sign that that's not going to continue, that he's going to have to leave. And it's going to really pain me to see him leave because I think he's such a fantastic player. I think he's massively underused. And I know you, what you're saying, but the only way you can prove that you can stay fit is by playing. And, you know, if you're not going to play, how can you prove yourself? That's the only only way you can prove yourself on the pitch. It's the only way you can prove your fitness, your, your quality, what you can bring to this side is by being given opportunities and he's consistently being overlooked for those opportunities. I think it was a big, the latest injury was a big shame because for the first time in a long time, it looked like he had worked his way up the pecking order a little bit. He 
he started one game, wasn't it, uh, at home? Sheffield United, was it? I can't remember who it was, but he started that game ahead of Kai Havertz. He came on in the 2-2 at Chelsea. He was like the first sub that came on. Again, he came on ahead of Kai Havertz and Fabio Vieira in that game. And it looked like suddenly he was, he, he, you know, right there in the pecking order. And then he got the injury and now he's having to work his way back again. So I thought that one was a shame and it would have been interesting to see how many minutes he was going to get in that period before the injury struck. Um, but I just, I just think he's been underused. I really do. And I look at that position that I was just talking about and I just want to, if, if, if Emil had been given the amount of minutes that Kai Havertz had been given this season in that position, I just, I'd be intrigued to see what his numbers would be right now. Um, but it just doesn't look like Arteta f- fancies him for whatever reason right now. It looks like he's moved on from Emil and I think that's a real, real shame. And if he does go, which I think sadly is inevitable, yeah. that it's going to be a real, real shame. And I do worry about him going on and being a huge success somewhere else. But um, ultimately, Mikel Arteta right now is a manager and he's got the final say in things. So if he if he doesn't believe in Emil Smith-Rowe for whatever reason that is, then you know, I think ultimately that's going to lead to him him moving on. Yeah, it feels that way, doesn't it? It really, really does. Uh, 